start out, I'm just going to say a little bit about the Rothman Institute. So people, you know, if new people come, they know who we are. So um, um, with that, um, it's 12 o'clock. We like to start and finish on time. I'm your host, Dr. Dale Caldwell, the Executive Director of the Rothman Institute of Innovation and Entrepreneurship. And, and today we have uh, Kevin Johnson, who is uh, uh, ex extraordinary, a former extraordinary football player, but uh, currently an extraordinary entrepreneur, but a, an even better person. And so it's going to be an, an honor to have a conversation with, uh, with Kevin today. And I, I promise each of you will learn a lot about, about business, about life. Um, I, I just learned so much when I talked to him. Um, first, uh, I just want to talk about the, the Rothman Institute of Innovation and Entrepreneurship. And so we've been around over 30 years. Our focus on is, is on promoting, researching, and supporting entrepreneurship when it comes to veterans, family businesses, students, and, and urban, uh, urban businesses and really providing advisory services and consulting. We do this show to really bring on experts, people who have been successful entrepreneurs, people who advise successful entrepreneurs. And uh, we record this, we put this on our YouTube page so that folks will have access to some information so that, that when they are, are, are trying to get through the, to the next level, they can, they can talk to, to or hear from people like Kevin. So, so Kevin, first, um, welcome. And um, I, I wanna begin with, you know, a little bit about who you are. And so where'd you grow up? I grew up in Hamilton Township, New Jersey, uh, my whole entire life. So a Jersey guy. And, and, uh, and you, did you go to high school in, at Hamilton? Yes, I went to Hamilton High West. Okay. Um, from 90, was 91 to 94. Okay. And so now you, you, you played football and you were a quarterback there? Yes, I received a full scholarship to Syracuse University, you know, as a quarterback. Um, in 94, um, same year as Donovan McNabb. And, um, and through that process, uh, they, they thought I would be a better wide receiver after a tough competition. Uh, moved to wide receiver my junior year in, in, in college. Um, did not start, uh, worked hard, worked, worked through the process, learned more, learned from other professionals. And my senior year, I was given an opportunity to start. Um, and after starting and having a you know, great year working with Donovan and, and obviously his story is, is, is historical, some of the things that he did in Philadelphia, um, I was able to be drafted the 32nd overall pick to the Cleveland Browns. Well, man, I mean, there, there's so much in that story for, for folks. So one is, you know, one, I, I, I'm so impressed that you, you really put your ego. I mean, we all have an ego. We all have that, but you have to set your, you, you're a superstar to be recruited to Syracuse from a, a small New Jersey town, you must have been a, a star. And so how did you deal with that ego? It's like, wait, 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 I'm, a, I'm used to being a star. How did you deal with that? Well, I think it was, you know, I think it's very humbling. I think when you, when, you, when you allow people to build you up, and, and at the time Syracuse was a phenomenal, you know, college yeah. football program, they were rated in the top 10 every year. So I was, I was probably one of the top highest recruited players in the country coming out of Hamilton West. Um, getting to Syracuse, obviously, you know, you, you start believing the press clippings, you start believing what people are saying about you. Um, and while I got there, I, I met a Donovan McNabb, who was who was arguably very talented, 6'2", 6'3", 215, 220 pounds, can do it all. And here I was, a 5'11", quarterback, 180 pounds, who <laughs> just met his match. Um, and I think, you know, through hard work and dedication, um, you know, I competed, I did everything possible. But I just knew I had a place within the organization, within the team to be to have a you know, tremendous impact um, after a lot of consideration, you know, thinking about transferring, thinking about all the other things that 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 possibly was was out there. I decided to stick it through. Um, I made my bed. My mother always told me, you, you make your bed, you lay in it. Uh -huh. um, and I decided to transfer, you know, with the help of a guy named Marvin Harrison, who was a first ballot Hall of Famer with the Indianapolis Colts. He helped, you know, hone my tools, you know, helped me become a wide receiver. And I transitioned and, and I made something, a bad situation, you know, pretty good. Wow. And so, I mean, not only did you not have the position, but you, you went to another position and you didn't start. And so, um, um, and those are lessons. And, and, and when we hear about his entrepreneurial philosophy, that, uh, that really, and so that was great training, wasn't it? I think so. I think one of the things that society today, you know, always looks at is, I want instant gratification. I want instant success. But I think one of the things that we always have to look at is what do we learn in the process? What do we learn from our setbacks? What do we learn from our, you know, from the opportunities where we don't get what we want? You know, the famous cliche is a setback is just really, you know, set up for, a, you know, a comeback. 
So uh, I always look at, you know, what, what is, what is God or what is the situation trying to teach me as I go through it? Um, just, I think it really builds your character, builds your integrity and allows you to, when you get to the position that you've always been honing, you know, you have better success and you have a better opportunity to, uh, you know, reap the benefits of your hard work and dedication. Yeah. Well, that's, and, and you're living that you're living that in so many ways. All right. So you're, you're tell me about the, what, what's it like to be an NFL player? Um, I think, you know, you, you live a childhood dream. I think, right. you know, you've been playing a game, you know, all your life and you're never paid for it. So I think when you get to playing professional football, we all look at, you know, the opportunity to make a lot of money, but we're still playing a child's game and you're playing with the best of the best in the world. So uh, I think it's something that I always tell people, you know, that's one of the, the, the best highlights that I could ever, you know, you know, imagine or, or dream of is, is playing in an atmosphere, doing a job with the best of the, in the world and, and, and really trying to compete and, uh, and, and, and one up them. So uh, great experience, met a lot of phenomenal people, you know, experienced and, and understood what hard work and dedication, you know, really is. Um, because a lot of times, the harder you get to the top, the harder it is not only to stay at the top, but it, it, it's, it's, it's also harder to hone your skills because when you're up there, it's not much room and, and you really have to fine tune the details to actually improve. Well, and, and, and again, and all these are lessons for entrepreneurs, but I, I often think about it. People don't really think about it. So you're, you're, you're doing well on your team. So, but every year there are stars coming out of college that challenge you. So you can't, you can't let your guard down. Absolutely. I, mean, I think you hit it on a key point. I think at an early age, you learn that is mm -hmm. a, a coach, a owner, um, a general manager every year, they're trying to improve their team. And I think people in society take it personal when someone's looking to upgrade a situation, but that's their responsibility. So you've got to stay on your A game. You've got to continue to hone your craft because every year they're trying to replace you with younger, better talent at a cheaper rate. So mm -hmm. um, you got, you know, you got to make it tough on them. So if they're, they are going to replace you, they're going to, they're going to really work really hard because you're not going to give it up without a, a good solid fight. Well, again, you know, the NFL is so popular now and so on. That's why I really appreciate you talking about this because there are questions I know people, people have. So going from team to team, what's that like with your family and some moving from city to city and what teams were you with? It's, it's actually, it's actually tough. And I was fortunate that my kids were young. Mm -hmm. um, my kids were two, three years old at the time. I had two boys. So it really didn't impact the schools and, and, and really, you know, getting up and, and really getting them used to, you know, new friends and, and stuff like that. So we were fortunate in that aspect, but it, it's actually fun because one of the things about the NFL, you know, you, you always play with a guy or a few guys on a team, coaches, you know, lose jobs, gain jobs. So there's always familiarity with, with different players. And during the off season, you, you train with a lot of guys and you see guys, you know, during games and, and throughout the off season. So you always have relationships. It was, it was always great to learn a new area, learn new cultures, right. um, learn how other people prepare, work with different, you know, superstars and seeing what, what made them who they are. So it, it was actually great because it honed me as a person. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. The, so now as you are, are leaving now that you decided to where, why did you leave your NFL career? What, what prompted you to kind of move to the, the, the outside world? So my last year I was playing for the Detroit Lions and I actually tore my Achilles tendon. Oh. Um, I, I actually went down in Birmingham, Alabama with Dr. James Andrew, a world-renowned specialist in, in, in surgical procedures. And it, it came to that point where my boys were, you know, seven, eight years old. And I said, all right, I got to make a decision. Do you, you want to continue to, to you know, get up and move? have your kids travel the world? Or do you want to say, you know what, now it's time for me to transition and move into the next phase of, of, of my life. So I decided to, to take the leap of faith and, and started to put my plan in place as far as my transition into the real world, into the business world. And um, I think in, in 2006, I decided to say, you know what, let me, let me take a few steps back, you know, you know, gather myself and start to get ready for, you know, the real corporate world. So you actually developed a plan. You actually, you're a planner. So you really were thinking strategically about that. Talk a little bit about that process. Well, one of the things that I learned early on, and I think uh, one of my, one of my you know, mentors was a guy named Troy Vincent, who's, who's from New Jersey, the right. PA area, um, born and raised in Trenton. So he's actually the second in charge of NFL football right now under yeah. Roger Goodell. Yeah. So Troy told me back in 
I think it was like 97, 98 when I was when I was started to get ready to leave college and enter into the pros. He said, he said, Kay, you got to start preparing for retirement when you get into the league. Hmm. And so that really, that really, you know, you know, stayed and stuck in my brain. So he said, retirement is, is, is just a play away. So at that point, just watching him, how he conducted himself as, as a professional um, and how he went about his business, I always started to look at life. Okay, as I work through the NFL, what type of relationships that am I building? What type of people am I talking to? Whose brain am I picking? And um, so I started to, you know, really gravitate towards people and, and, and read like Fortune 500 magazines and started to try to see how did successful people do it? What were some of the common themes and, and, and common elements that, you know, wealthy people, you know, did and how they can, you know, live their lives. So that I started that probably my first year in, in professional football. Well, you see behind me, these are, these are some of the books I've read. One is on influence called Intelligent Influence, which is all about, about influence. And so one of the things that strikes me about who you are is you always, even early on, you, you really understood the value of, of putting the right people around you, of, uh, of, of really setting back and listening to people that have more experience. How did, did you always do that? Did you do that in high school too? Well, I, I think there is, you're not, you shouldn't reinvent the wheel. Yeah. There's a commonality of, of what successful people do and mm -hmm. how they conduct themselves and how they mm -hmm. live their lives. It, it, a lot of it is routine. A lot of it is, you know, is constant practice, you know, doing a lot of things consistently. And, and I think when you when you start to be around and hang around greatness and talk around greatness, mm -hmm. there is there is something in a room that you should gravitate towards and, and pick up something from each individual. So that was something that was important to me. And I think, you know, playing pro football, being around, you know, such unique and talented people that it was a way that guys go about their business that a lot of times people don't see it in the real world because TV only shows you the end product. They don't show you the grind in the process. So when you're around that every day, things don't happen by accident. They happen from hard work and dedication. See, and that's, 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 an, and, and, and for those of young entrepreneurs and, and even those that are older entrepreneurs, that's the message that it's a grind. It's hard. It's hard. You can reap some great rewards, but it really is. Um, so, you, so you've made your plan, you know, you, you, you could go anywhere in the country or the world how did you decide to come to Jersey? I know you're from here. Did Troy Vincent help to, to convince you? What, what, what went well, it, it was it was it was uh, something that was familiar to me, um, mm -hmm. and and my, my wife is from New Jersey as well, mm -hmm. so it was just something that was very familiar. And I think one of the things that I knew leaving pro football was I knew fitness. Mm -hmm. I knew I knew how to prepare. I knew how to get someone from A to B and to improve their body, improve their mindset, improve their skill set. So I felt Jersey was was a great you know place to start because of familiarity, and um, this is where we decided to make home. Excellent. And so again, I and I should tell you are a, a committed family man. You have wonderful kids. How did you and your wife meet? Well, we're actually my high school sweetheart. So my wife and I have been together for for years. So she she's wow. sort of the better part of myself. Um, so you know we we go way back. So good, bad, different. She's always been a rock. So uh, you know you know, having her by my side, you know, she, she actually, you know, it's, it's a blessing in disguise. And he's saying that she's not watching. So he, it's from the heart. So he's not, uh, not just saying it. All right. So you come back to Jersey, you know, you want to do, you want to do a fitness center. How did you start? How did you, uh, how did you start that? Well, one of the things you always hear about in any type of, you know, real estate transaction is location, location, location. Mm -hmm. So I think when you, when you looked at New Jersey, um, New Jersey was in a, in a growth pattern, you know, moving towards South Jersey and Central Jersey. So when you look at New York City, New Jersey real estate was extremely expensive right when you come out of New York City and it started to travel down South. So, you know, I took a, I took a look at it and I looked at Route 130 and you look at Route 130 starts in New Brunswick and you start to see the value of real estate in New Brunswick. And as it comes down, it started to get cheaper and cheaper. And so I found a location in Bordentown, New Jersey, because when you look at Bordentown, it's, it's sort of central New Jersey, but it's also like the neck of New Jersey. So you have New Jersey Turnpike, you have 295, you have 195. And so when you looked at the, the, the pattern, what they were doing in New Jersey and Pennsylvania, that they were building an extension from the PA Turnpike to connect to the New Jersey Turnpike to give them more access. So my envision was when you look at the tri-state area, I believe the tri-state area covers about 30% of the population in the country. 
So I said, if I can get on a major artery that has access to all the, you know, all of those major interstates, you know, within two miles, you probably got something. So that was important for me when you look at the hist- you know, history of, of real estate. It's always about location. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and I love the strategic way you go about thinking. And so, and I love, it defies the stereotype. Well, he's a football player. He lets his body decide. No, you are strategically just like a, a good entrepreneur kind of saying, where should I be? Location is important. Uh, you know, th- this is what's going on demographically. And, and I find a lot of people don't do that. They kind of go with their gut and they don't look at the numbers and then they regret it. They re- re- really regret it. So. Well, I think one of the things you mentioned there is, is being a, being a, a ex football player, ex NFL player is a blessing and a curse. The blessing side of it is, is that you, you're extremely detailed because when you're going into a game on Sunday, you leave no stone unturned. You practice all week and you watch tape and you find the slightest, you know, issue or problem or, you know, you know, issue with another team personnel guy who can't play really well and you attack the weaknesses. So I think that was one of the things that, you know, being a a ex-professional athlete, was that you can hone into the details and you can find the weakness in anything. So if you look at something long enough, there is a weakness. You just got to be patient enough to find it. The con to being a pro and being a pro, you know, athlete is people think you're, you're not educated. You're, you're, right. you're dumb. Right. And right. you can use that to your advantage because people <laughs> really show their colors if you right. give them long enough. And right. I always believe that's why God gives you two eyes um, two ears and one mouth. So be quick to listen and watch and slow to talk. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, uh, um, you know, I've, I've met a number of folks and I'm just so impressed with how brilliant, I mean, it's not just smart, but brilliant, successful athletes are, because as you said, it's that detail. And, and, you know, those of us watch, we watch football and I'm a tennis guy. And so, uh, so I know the details and ends and ends and outs of tennis, but when you watch the NFL, you don't realize how much is going on. And, and, uh, uh, how difficult the plays are. I mean, I know folks that didn't last in the league because they couldn't memorize the plays. Right. And so, uh, it, you know, your mind's constantly working. And, and so you, and I love what you said about exploiting weakness. And that's, you know, that's really, that's really, really, really key. So, all right. So you've done this analysis, you know, the area, you got a good sense of what the opportunity is. What was the first thing you did? Well, like I said, so then you do further due diligence. You, you look at, you, you look at, you know, what is the growth pattern Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, the income, the income, income of the area. And then you start to try to find, okay, how do, how do I look at this area and and how do, how do I, you know, do what I want to do? So one of the things that Dr. James Andrews, you know, told me as well as his physical therapist, Kevin Wilkes was, he said, Kevin, when you look at fitness going forward, it's going to be tied to, it's going to be medically based. So you need a hospital, you need medical practices around it, because one of the things that we always know that people get sick. And people are going to focus more on their wellness aspect rather than being bigger, stronger athletes. So that was important for me to start to reach out to the local medical practices, hospitals, and start to looking at their, you know, their future plans and, and what was their growth strategy. And I started to do that due diligence, that exploratory process and, and, and started to meet with, you know, the capital helps of the world, the uh, Robert Wood Johnson of the world, the St. Francis medical centers of the world and started to see and get a feel for what their expansion processes were. Interesting. And, and, um, um, you also, uh, I know that the Rothman Orthopedics is right there. And, and, and we joke at the Rothman Institute, people think we're connected. So I, I say I'm from Rothman to say, you did my knee, you did my hip, but you know, but no, no, we didn't, we, we do entrepreneur stuff, not that health stuff. All right. So, all right. So what was your first project? What was the first project? And, and, and how did you get financing to support that project? Well, that's very interesting. So when, when I first started off, it was 2007, 2008. And we all remember the the real estate collapse and the housing yeah. collapse in 2007, 2008. Yeah. And, and one of the things that I think that people don't understand being an entrepreneur, that you got to be, you got to be okay with doors being shut in your face and people telling you that, you know, that's not going to work or, you know, banks telling you that you need more experience. That's a part of the process. That's a part of you honing your skills, you know, getting that, that mental toughness. Um, so I, I met with every single bank that I can get in front of, probably 15 to 20 different banks. And they said, thank you, Kevin, great idea, but uh, we're going to pass. Thank you, Kevin, great idea, we're going to pass. But that work ethic, that tenacity and that focus that you just continue to you know, try and, and work at it. So 
In 2009, 2010, after about two or three years of, of, of getting put in front of banks, finally, I met with a guy from, from TD Bank named Tim Proctor, who was the, who was the uh, regional manager of all the real estate transactions that was going on. I presented it to him. He said, you know, yeah, we'll take a shot. And I was pretty much shocked because <laughs> there was so many, so many people said no to me. So right. the first building I built on site was um, a medical office building for St. Francis Medical Center mm-hmm. um, on, on my campus. And, and so, so there's a lot, there's a lot there. I mean, one of the things that I tell folks, and, and Kevin was on my show, Entrepreneur State of Mind. And, and when I talked to the interview family businesses and others, I say, well, how did you start 50 years ago? And they all said, well, the bank trusted me and gave me a character loan and they don't have character loans anymore. And, and that, that, it, that really hurts the American economy that, I mean, here at Kevin, you, you're hearing, you're, you're hearing Kevin, he's a successful athlete, very structured, brilliant guy. You know, if it was 50 years ago, you know, if, if, uh, taking away any of the, the, the kind of some of the, the racial implications, you know, you're the kind of guy they would want to want to take a chance on. And you've proven you've proven them right. So they they benefit from taking a chance. So I don't know how we in our economy, we need to really push banks and push push legislators to really say you need to invest. Banks need to have the freedom to invest in in people that they can that they believe in. So so that that is that's a great story. And so that first project went well, obviously. How did you decide to go on the next project? Well, you know. After the first project, you, you started to say like I didn't I didn't get a chance to build my health club yet, but you know working with a a, a big company like St. Francis Medical Center Center and Trinity Healthcare, who is really the parent company of St. Francis Medical Center, you build a reputation. And, and again, it wasn't it wasn't the smoothest you know process, but we got it to the finish line. Mm-hmm. So then you you built some mental mental equity and, and, and capital with the bank that says, hey, this guy can get things across the finish line. So as you as you move forward, now some of the naysayers or the or the banks and the people who didn't think you can actually start, you start to gain their attention. So I continue working with TD Bank, and then I built my corporate office because one of the things I realized is that when you when you when you looked apart, people look at you a little bit different. So I invested a few million dollars in my corporate office because one of the things about it is when you invite people to your corporate office. People do transaction with people, not so much of how smart you are, but how you look and how you present yourself. So I had to have that good presentation to make sure that when people want to do business with me, not so much that I was smart, that, and it's sad to say it, but you need to look smart. And so when they walked into the office, you, you give them a chance to sit down, embrace the atmosphere, and then you start to conduct your business. And that started to open up more doors and more opportunities because people's perception of me changed because I, I passed that look test of what corporate America, no matter how strange it sounds, and, and, it, and it really is crazy, but you pass that look test from an from a, from a individual and from what corporate America perceives as success. And, and I love, Kevin, how you keep it real. I love how you're really talking about, about, about reality. And so, yeah, you, you know, I'm a, I'm a blithering idiot, but I'm, I have books behind me. So people think that I'm smart. So they, right. <laughs> but whether you are or not, that's what, that's the reality of what our, what our, what our country looks at. Yeah, yeah exactly. And, and they really, they really look at that. And so, uh, and then, but then when they know, and they've seen you be successful, then you're at another level. And so you're another level. And so now how did you, how did you start this gem? You know, how did you start team 85? So, so after I proved to TD Bank and TD Bank lent me well over 20 something million dollars, hmm. they just was at a point to where they said, hey, you know, our legal lending amount was, you know, we started to exceed, exceed our legal lending amount. Hmm. So at that point, I had Fulton Bank on site, who was also, you know, a tenant of mine. So they decided to lend me some more money to do my next venture, which was another medical office building. Mm-hmm. So earned their trust, gained their trust, and, and then I started to proceed. So once I got finished with all of the office buildings around me, the biggest risk in the whole project was that was the health club because I'm 100% owner of, of my entire you know, property here, my portfolio. So a bank wanted to make sure you had enough equity and enough experience that when we lend you, you know, <clears throat> sorry, 10, $15 million to build a health club, mm-hmm. that you have the, the perseverance and the, and the confidence and the, the war stripes to make sure that when things get a little rocky that you've proven to us that you can figure it out. So I, I eventually convinced Amboy Bank to lend me those funds to build my health club. And um, 
you know, and that was that that actually was 2014. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the health club was finished in 2016. And we've been doing, you know, fairly well, all things considered, you know, for the last, you know, um, five, six years. Well, one of the things you, you told me strategically when I had a chance to visit this, this site and we can we can show the I can pull up the website um, is that the new healthcare, and new, even before the pandemic, people want to walk to the gym, right? People want to be close to it so they can come and go. And that's such a, such a brilliant, uh, just a brilliant idea. And so how did the gym do when you first got it gone? It, it came out, it was, it was cash flow positives uh, day one. So, wow. you know, we, we built something that was sustainable. We built something that was, was um, beautiful and that gained a lot of people's eye appeal. And, and then we, we backed it up with quality service, great programming. And I think the, 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 the community really enjoyed what we had to offer. And, and we see stories every day where we have, you know, people who are, who are, you know, living much healthier, went to right. the doctors with high blood pressure, blood, blood pressure comes all the way down, people losing 100 pounds, you know, go back to the doctors and doctor says, wow, what have you been doing? So that is the, the real benefit behind it, because you want to make the community much healthier. Um, live longer and live, live, you know, to be with their friends and family. Excellent. Excellent. So is it okay if I punch up the website, we can talk Absolutely. to it, let people, let people see this beautiful, beautiful place. All right. So it's team 85. So why'd you call it team 85? Well, one of the things that I felt that was important when you start looking at community, you know, centers or community, you know, locations is, is together everyone accomplishes more everyone has to be in it together Love and it. everyone has to you know you know want to pour a little bit into the jar to, to create you know to help others um 85 was my nfl jersey number and i just felt that was a, that was a great you know statement to to represent from a health and wellness center excellent so if we look at the 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 virtual tour That's, that's beautiful. So yeah, talk about this area. So how much parking do you have? So an entire campus, I believe we have close to 1,100, 1,200 um, parking spaces. Okay. Um, so the, the building in the middle is the health club. Um, right. the building to the left, to the left of it is St. Francis Medical Center. Um, and the building in the far, in the building behind the health club right here in the front is right. a, is an indoor turf facility. And the okay. building in the, in the far rear, which is a three-story uh, medical office building. We have physical therapy in that building. My corporate office is on the third floor. Excellent. Excellent. I mean, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful campus. It's a, it's a real beautiful. Now, what about the trees in the back? What's, what's that? Is that just open land or what? Yeah. So, so the trees in the back and, and the silos is right there to your rear mm -hmm. is I'm actually in a process of developing uh, 269 apartments. Mm -hmm. um, I believe Dale, if you, if you go to um, teamcampus.com teamcampus.com if, if you want to go to teamcampus.com it'll show you okay. the expansion so so these photos right here you can see um uh more of the of the of, of the campus but you, you can you can click on that Dale. okay okay <clears throat> oh, it's a little slower here oh it's not switching here There we go. So live, work, play. Yes. Um, are you are you there yet? Yeah. 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 Can you see it? The team yeah. Campus. So yeah, yeah. So so what 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 I attempted to do here was um, team campus is 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 makes up approximately sixty five acres that I own, which is thirty two on one side and a balance on the other side. Okay. Um, so if if you can, so here is is eighty two fifty five and older apartments that that I started probably about. 18 months ago, we finished one of the buildings and the other one should be finished um, within the next 60 days. Okay, excellent. So, so here is the expansion. Um, wow. If, if you wanna go up a little bit more, Dale, you can probably yep. see. So this is, this is the expansion that we're doing to the current you know, Team 85 Fitness and Wellness mm -hmm. Campus. Um, we're, one more, Dale. Oh, yeah. oh. There we go. Can you see that I have architectural details? Right. So, so right here, the, the picture that he has in front of us right there, you, you can actually see the health club again yeah. um, in, 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 the, in the middle photo. And what we did was we put um, an additional six apartment buildings 
um, that will go in place of where the silos is. So that project is actually started. So we expect to have the first building completed um, by this time next year, and then we'll start rolling out the other buildings. So we really wanted to create a live, work, play environment because one of the things that I think we saw through COVID is people are much more of a social uh, butterfly and they want to be around environments where they can live they can work and they can play and play being really the health club to be able to have their kids go out and and, and play sports um, go work out go to a zumba class go to a, you know aerobics class so we believe this is the type of facility and type of um, urban living arrangements that people are, are gravitating towards so you know, this campus we think is going to thrive. We have medical practices that are additional medical practices that are coming. Um, so this will be something that I think is going to be phenomenal as we move forward. And so there's, there's your headquarters here. Yes. And the fitness and well, I mean, this is an amazing complex, the medical, the medical building complex. Um, wow. And, and uh, um, employment, you and I talked yesterday about employment that you really, Go out of your way to to to, to encourage and, and give other people a chance to uh, to employ. Obviously, you employ some family members and friends and other things. Talk about that. Talk about your philosophy about about employment. Well, I, I think um, I think one of the one of the hardest things in our society today is to have confidence and and to be able to find people who can understand your issues or your insecurities or 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 some of the things that uh, that motivates and encourages you. So what, what, I, what I try to do is I try to look for young individuals who are, who are you know, need some encouragement, need some motivation, um, and needs to see someone like them, grew up in the same areas, who has some so similar challenges that they can sort of look at and, and ask some of the tough questions. So one of the things that I always try to do is I don't wear suits. I, I try not to, because I think a lot of times when you look at um, inner city kids, you look at yeah. kids who are who have less than they can't relate to a suit and tie. I right. knew when I first left pro football, I used to always believe a person who had a suit and tie was was intelligent and was smart mm -hmm. because, you know, that's what I thought. Mm. As I grew in business, I realized some of them, you know, are the most uneducated and, and <laughs> unintelligent <laughs> individuals yeah. I've, I've seen. But what they do is they hide behind that that those clothing and, and, and a briefcase. And they they trick people into and to allow others to feel that you know I'm not capable or I don't have the ability to to do that. So I always just try to you know get on younger individuals level, talk to them that say, hey, you got to have a tremendous work ethic. You gotta you gotta trust you know everything in yourself that you can achieve and you can uh, get to where you want to go. And I think when they see me, they say, okay, this guy started from the bottom, this guy pulled himself up, and if he can do it, then why not me? And right. I think you, you can motivate and encourage people by, by, by being honest and open that, listen, you're not gonna you know, have success on your first attempt, you're not gonna have it on your second attempt. It may take you 10 opportunities, but anyone who's at the top, they failed multiple times. They may not tell you that, but they have, because that's the only way you can, you can get to where you wanna go. And, and that has really, motivated a lot of kids and, and young adults to say, you know what, you know, it's okay to fail and, and, and to get yourself back up and uh, try it again. And, and I'm, I'm as, as you're talking, I'm showing this is a, an amazing facility. Now, a lot of thought went into designing this. Talk about the thought and designing the inside of this facility, this amazing place. Well, the key thing is I wanted to make it sort of that, that modern day hotel uh, type feel um, not a, not a, a sweat box, a, a gym. I wanted to make it sort of uh, a wellness center, um, a place that people can feel very comfortable. Um, one thing about fitness right now, only 13 or 14% of our population, you know, are actively involved in, in health clubs. And, and one of the things that you, you can look at COVID, one of the things that helped individuals through COVID was building their immune system. And one of the, the one of the best ways to build your immune system is through fitness. And to working out and, and to and to build your body to fight off you know viruses and, and, and things like that. So if we can get more than you know than the percentage that we have to utilize you know health clubs and, and get themselves more active, then your body can be able to sustain you know you know viruses and, and, and COVID type symptoms. Um, so 
we have a long way to go. And, and what I wanted to do is make this environment non-intimidating. And we, we put, you know, fresh, bright colors on it. We, you know, I purchased the best equipment that money can buy. And we have great resources around the facility that can help people, you know, become the best version of themselves. Now, I love this. You can see on the wall, you have motivational sayings. Did, did you come up with those or did you, uh, did you was there a strategy in, in doing that? Well, well, one of the things that I always believe in is is great, you know, you know, cliches or messages that can just, you know, give you that, you know, that pick me up. Mm -hmm. um, and and I think people need that, you know, you know, if you maximize the day, if you if you do everything possible in the moment and you continue to to, to make those deposits every day, that's how one becomes successful. I think a lot of times we look all the way at the finish line before we go through the process and it looks daunting and it looks long. I think people get so you know, nervous and say, oh, I'm not doing that. It's, that takes too long, uh, rather than maximizing every single opportunity every single day. The, uh, it's really just, just beautiful and just the tour. Now, um, now you have, uh, you know, talk a little bit. So, so we, we looked at the, the lifting equipment, the, the cardio equipment. You have, this is a running track. You also have basketball and other other things outside of that. T talk a little bit about the inside some more. Yeah, so you know, as you as you filter through this entire tour, um, we have two full court basketballs. We have an indoor turf facility, um, and we, we basically have everything possible to allow people to you know basically spend the day in an environment. Um, families, you know, can have you know little Johnny, little Susie doing certain things. Um, so it's everything. It's a one-stop shop, um, football, basketball. We do softball, baseball training. Uh, we do everything. We, we have a little bit of everything in, in our, our, our line is we have something for everyone. We have two pools. We have a kiddie pool. We have a, a, a lap pool. Um, so I tried to make sure that I covered every base, um, my days in professional sports and in, in, in college sports. I wanted to build a one-stop shop. And I think, um, you know, I was able to do it. Um, took a lot of hard work, dedication, a lot of research, a lot of, you know, homework, going to different places, seeing the do's and don'ts of what other people do. And, uh, we, you know, Team Campus and, and Team 85 Fitness and Wellness was, was born. And, um, you know, that's where, you know, we've trained tons of, of athletes, a lot of guys in college, some guys in pro football, um, and, and it's just been a, a, a great experience. Um, here's another cliche, dreams um, do not become goals without work. And I think, you know, that's what people think. Sometimes nothing is just going to happen. You're just not going to show up one day and you're going to, you know, reach your, your goal or your destination. Um, and um, I don't get I don't know how far this one goes around, but I have a great um, uh, line in here in this room. It was a, you know, the line by Theodore Roosevelt was the man in the arena. So, uh, right. you know, a lot of people see, you know, Tom Brady now, he's on TV now. He has a special on ESPN called the man in the arena. Um, that's something that a lot of guys who in, in, in pro sports can can value because when, when, when you put yourself on front street, and, and you, you, you allow people to throw stones at you. There's going to be good and bad things that happen. Um, and uh, one of the things that I always value when you, when you read that, that, you know, that man in the arena, it just tells you that um, at least you try, at least you gave it your best effort. At least right. you, you didn't, you didn't um, not try. And a lot of people judge from the sideline. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants to be Monday morning quarterback. Everybody wants to tell you what you can or you cannot do because they haven't done it. And they haven't put themselves in a position to be judged. So uh, that's why, you know, in this room is, is, is phenomenal because I tell people, you got to fear nothing. You, right. you got to be a dog. You got to have, you, you got to be willing to, to, to put yourself out there. And if you fail, you fail. If you, if you, uh, if you don't make it, you don't make it. Um, but at least you gave it your best, you know, shot. And here it is coming right here. It's, it's, we, we have a poem. I always tell people to read this. It's the man in the arena. It just goes and just explains to people right. that, when you give it, when you give it your all, then yep. it is what it is, you know, yep. um, you know, and, and people can judge you, but you know, you try. And if you don't try, you'll never, you never have a chance to succeed. So this room is great. And uh, it gives, it, it, it builds these young guys up and these young women up to say, you know what, you know, take a shot. Yeah.
Yeah, give give it your shot. So how do you you know on that note, how do you feel about you know as an athlete? I mean, there you know people are making millions. Talk, you know, have never been athletes before, but they're talking about them. They'll say, "Hey, Joe, you know, Joe's horrible. This guy's mediocre." How do, as an athlete who's given your life, how do you honestly feel about? I won't mention any names. To feel about people who who are big mouths but have never done it. It's the noise, it's, and you know, it's the nature of the beast, and right, and right. and you 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 know, you you have to be able to listen to the noise and not take it personal, um, because th- those are those are you know Monday morning quarterbacks, or you know, or or uh, you know, you go up to people and say, "Oh, I used to do this, you know, ten years ago. I used to do this twenty years ago." Or you should try this, or you should do this. Right. It's, so then you, you don't want to say it, but you you, you want to say, well, if you was if you're capable of doing this, then why are you sitting here talking to me? Exactly. Um, exactly. But you got to do it. You got, you got to be professional. You, you got to make sure that you stay within yourself, and and you know you can't show people your weakness. And you and nowadays you have these 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 thumb tough guys. You know, I call them I call them paper champions that they <laughs> on social media and right. they, they they write these 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 thoughts about you. Because they haven't done it, and you got to take that with pride, and you got to take that with with dignity, and, and you got to continue to move it forward. The uh, there it is, man. Here, here go another one. So as you enter our field house, right. I put the same poem up, "The Man in the Arena," because yeah. you want people to understand that you know what, if it was easy, everyone would do it. Right. Um, exactly. But it's not going to be easy, right. and, and you got to be able to put yourself under that spotlight and be judged, and not take it personal, and continue to still move forward. Excellent. Now, now, are you are you all full as far as so if people <clears throat> on this call are in the area, the Bordentown area? Are you still taking uh, memberships? Oh yes, we, we're we're definitely we're growing our membership base again, um, and um, so you know, yeah, people want to come by and join. We give you a, a quality tour. We give you sort of assessments when you join, um, and we just try to do the very best we can to to allow people to be the best version of themselves. And, and again, it's never going to be easy. It's all about hard work and dedication, but we provide the atmosphere and the resources around you to allow that to be as efficient as possible. What a coincidence. You pitch orange and blue. Isn't that Syracuse, Syracuse's colors? Absolutely. That's Absolutely. a strange coincidence, isn't it? Absolutely. <laughs> oh, that's a beautiful, beautiful gem. When you show me the gem, that's uh and so I'm just, I'm just taking people through. I love this virtual tour. So people on, you know, can really, as we're talking, can really, uh, really see. All right. So you've built this. Now, do you work with a lot of high school, you know, high level athletes for basketball and, and football and baseball? Yes. We're, we're getting back into um, through this pandemic, obviously for the last two years, it's been a hit or miss because, you know, obviously we wanted to be as safe as possible. Didn't want to try to um, expose people to, you know, more people than they didn't have to be around. But um, prior to COVID um, we probably put, um, or help put at least 25 to 30, you know, guys into college. Um, like I said, we have guys who are in the pros. I mean, we've worked with um, Minka Fitzpatrick, who's who's now in the safety for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Oh, wow. Um, we wow. work with Eli Apple, who's who started in the Super Bowl this year for the Cincinnati Bengals. Oh, wow. Um, we, we work with Russell Douglas, who, who's the starting corner for the Green Bay Packers. I mean, we've got countless guys in college football playing at a high level. Um, Marvin Harrison Jr. at Ohio State, Justin Short at Florida. Um, I, I mean, Fred Hansard at Penn State. I mean, we we've gotten a lot of guys wow. you know, to to improve themselves. Not so much from what we offer, but just providing them a quality place to to get themselves bigger, stronger, and faster, and being a resource to guys who uh, who have questions and and concerns, and, as well as parents, just to provide them an atmosphere that you know, again, that I wish I had when I was in high school, um, you know, to have, and here, and here go some other, um, you know, statements that I'm big on. Don't talk about your dreams. It's great. It's a, don't, don't ask, don't ask if your you dreams are crazy. Um, ask um, if your dreams are, are crazy enough. Cause I always tell enough. people yeah. dream big dreams, you know, right. ask for big, you know, big things. And, you know, we call ourselves grind university. You know, when you come here, you know, you, you're here to grind, you're here to get yourself better. So, these are things that always kept me motivated and always kept me encouraged. And I just wanted to extend these things to high school and college kids, because that's what it's all about. The, uh, um, um, how important So one of the questions too, we have, you know, how important is it surrounding yourself with the right people? You've, you've kind of talked about that, but that's, 
That's a good, good, good question. I think it's extremely important because a lot, a lot of times if, if you don't, if you don't surround yourself with the right people, either people can talk you into pursuing your dream or they can talk you out of your dreams. Right. So if you're not around the right people who have, who can give you some type of experience that, you know, how they were able to push through or navigate around, you know, things in life, then it's hard. And I think, um, you know, having a quality, you know, you know, people around you is always, you know, number one in my book. The, um, and again, we're, we're coming to the end of the tour, but this is, this is great. The, uh, it really is. And how many square feet is this facility? It's 120,000 square feet. Holy cow. Wow. Wow. It's beautiful. So as you can see, as an audience, you know, it's, it's worth a visit. It's worth going down to see. And, um, um, now, are you looking to build these in other places, other parts of the country? If the opportunity presented itself, um, ab absolutely. I think um, y y I think people are, are needing these type of you know atmospheres because there's a lot of talent in, in, in our country and that, that goes untapped. Um, but I think people don't have the resources or the people around them to allow them to 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 live their best life or be the best version of themselves. So. Um, absolutely, I would love. I would love to do that. And and what what is you know, as an entrepreneur, successful entrepreneur, as you're looking to to possibly go there? How much acreage would you need, or what are the what are kind of the elements that would make you seriously consider maybe doing another Team Eighty Five somewhere around the country? Um, the people who are involved in in, in the in the process, uh, making sure you have a, a town, a community who 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 not only needs it but will support it. Um, Cause these are, these are expensive ventures. You know, they yeah. take a long yeah. time to plan a lot of money. Um, so you got to make sure you have the right team around you and, and people who are actually, you know, have the mindset of, of investing in something and, 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 and really working it to come to fruition. Yeah. And, and we won't talk about any particular politicians or municipalities, but you and I've talked and, and I used to be deputy commissioner of department of community affairs. And, and it surprises me that more municipalities don't understand the value of doing exactly what you're doing, right? That they should be beating the, the door down to the Kevin Johnsons of the world to say, hey, can you come here and build this? You know, what, what are your, some of your thoughts about that, about municipalities and, and your kind of work? Well, I, I think it, 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 that's a loaded question. I think one of the things that I find that when you're doing these type of ventures, the key thing is, is timing. You can't have this amount of money exposed for for years and 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 you get into the the, the process to when it's not important for the municipality mm -hmm. um, because you know when you have millions of dollars 10 15 20 millions of dollars sitting in the streets and you don't have a motivated you know municipality who's willing to you know make the process much more efficient that's when projects die they never they never get off the ground um, and you got to have people who are who are big thinkers or, and who who are innovators and who 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 wants to you know, stop doing things that we've done 10, 15, 20 years ago. You got to have someone who's willing to, to break the mold. And I think these type of environments are breaking the mold because there is not a lot of them out there. And then when you don't, a lot of times I think people want to see other areas who've done certain things. And if they don't have the relationship or the mental capacity to even see it or understand it, then you, you're still going to be left in the stone ages. So I think you just need to have younger, brighter minds, innovating minds who are making decisions for these municipalities so they don't get lost in, in, into progress. Yeah, I think that's very, very well said and that, that innovation is the key. I mean, you know, this world and, and the hope is the pandemic, coming out of the pandemic, people realize we got to do things differently. You know, we can't Absolutely. continue to do things the same old, same old, the, you know, as, and the world is changing and, 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 and to get more young people involved, more, more people with new ideas involved. And so it's, it's, it's really a, it's, it's a challenge to change the, the, the powers that be. And so, uh, you know, you and I've talked about that and we're trying to work, work around the, around that. And so, so how do you, as an entrepreneur, how do you, how do you measure where to make sure you don't go too far? You don't overextend yourself or do, do you have a process for that? Or is it gut feel? How do you, how do you deal with that? Well, I think you definitely got to have some, um, some, some numbers of pro formers in benchmarks that you want to make sure that you stay within prior to you extending yourself more. You definitely got to have a, a, some, a lot of reserves. I think, you know, COVID, COVID hit and I think it caught a lot of people off, off guard. I think 
around the country, 30% of, of, of health club has closed permanently. Really? Uh, wow. COVID. Yeah, it, it, it was a tough, it was a tough, tough year. Wow. Um, New Jersey, we were closed for six months, um, which you know, again, that's, that's political, but you know, you're looking at fitness and wellness. It had this dark cloud over, Hey, if I go to health club, I'm gonna get COVID. Hey, if I do this, I'm gonna get COVID. In actuality, building your immune system is one of the better, best things you can do through these type of situations. And in New Jersey, we had the mentality that we're going to keep these things closed and we're not going to allow people to better themselves. And I think, you know, being around the, the atmosphere of people was, was better. Um, so it's, it's, it's just a grind deal. It's just, it's just so hard um, trying to, you know, work around and navigate through issues. But, you know, you just got to keep plugging away. Well, and, and, and it's, it's, I mean, so many things don't make sense. And again, it's not a, you're not beating anybody up, but I, I just don't understand liquor stores are open and, and health clubs are closed. Right. Right. In a pandemic. I mean, just, and that, that was, that was the toughest thing because what you do is, you know, um, you, they always say that sometimes the good guy finishes last. Right. So right. if you follow all the, all the rules and regulations, and, 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 and you don't, you're not the squeaky wheel and you don't get the oil, but the minute you start complaining, you doing things, then, then people pay attention. So we just, we just need better guidance and, and, and more consistency. Um, and, and what, what really was, what really was, was troublesome as the cases started going back up this year or, or two months ago, a month, we were open. So if we follow the, 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 the same rules and regulations, we should be closed two months ago right, because we right, were closed. Right. A year and a half ago, and we had less cases. Yeah. So nothing yeah. just made sense, and there were there were really no grants out there for health, you know, fitness and wellness centers that that were that were able to help clubs, um, restaurants, and, and all these other businesses got all this money. Health clubs are still on a back burner. They didn't they didn't so, receive so any PPP. Grants. There was no PPP money. Yeah, yeah, but PPP money is different because they had certain grants out there and, uh -huh. and federal money for other you know, other areas and other businesses, but fitness and wellness centers, we, we didn't have the political capital right. and the political, you know, you know, resources out there to, to, to fight Washington or fight the state to, to give us, you know, give us funding. But uh, you know how politics are, you know, the squeaky wheel or, or if you right. pay for the highest dinner, you, you get a, right. you get a voice and, and all of those things. I just don't think that's right. Right. It, it really, yeah, it really, it really isn't right. I think the American people feel the same way that it's uh, it's time for for change, and there's so many things that, that make absolutely absolutely no sense. So, so if we have some young people out there, I know we have a number of young people listening in, and there will be some watching the video, um, and they're interested in the health field. You know, what advice do you give? What do you know now that you wish you knew when you were first kind of starting in this this area of of health? So that's a great question. I think um, just surround yourself with quality people. Mm -hmm. People who have done it, people who have who has who have war marks on them, who have failed and bounced back, um, and just people who are who are open minded. And and a lot of times these young people have they're very they're innovators. They they're smart. They understand how to connect with people. Um, and I think you know they play a very important role in, in in how the industry and fitness and wellness is going to you know move forward. So I just think you know just surround yourself with quality people and and, and don't be afraid to fail. Don't be afraid to make a mistake and ask the questions that no one's asking, whether it's, a, it's you think it's a simple question, it's a dumb question. I'm just ask questions because once you start to connect the dots, it allow you to be a much more of an innovator and, and figure things out at a, at, a, at a faster pace. I mean, one of the things that's very, very clear from what, what we're talking about, information is power. That, that you can get the right information, you can, it really can help inform your decisions. And you've been doing that your whole, uh, your, your whole career is really getting as much information as possible. And I don't know that, I don't know that people really understand how important that is. I, I think, I think one of the things that there's, a, there's a place for, for everyone. So some of the times, you know, I, I call them my old gurus. So some of the guys are 70, 80 years old. They have a lot of wisdom. And when you ask those guys questions, they can give you information that is very valuable from their process. But then when you ask younger people who have failed, they can give you some guidance from their direction. And then you start using, you, you know, you start using your own mind to, to really, you know, dissect and allow the dust to settle to figure out what your next move should be. So um, I can't say old people have, you know, great, great insight as to 
what hard work and dedication is. And young people feel like at times things should happen yesterday. So it's somewhere in the middle. And um, I, I just love the relationships that I've built, you know, so far and this continue to be better. So here we have a question from our friend Anita Rivers. Do you offer internships in fitness and or business? If so, what is the process? Um, and, you know, provide uh, contact information, you know, with your HR department. So you can go into our website. I think we have info at team85fitnessandwellness.com. If you provide, you know, um, your information and, and, and some of the things that you want to do, someone will definitely get back to you. Um, and we, we love to have young people or anyone come in and ask, ask questions of how we can help people. I don't care if you want to be, you know, in the industry. You know, my job is to help people and, and to try to get them, you know, to start their own business, you know, try it, see what it's like. And I can try to navigate you as much as I can or to connect you with people who can, you know, maybe navigate you a little bit better. That's what we're here for. I mean, we're here to help others, you know, live their best life and live out, you know, some of the things that they want to try to accomplish. And so we've talked a lot about, about your buildings and your health, and now you're, you're entering the, the storage, the storage business, right? Yes. So you're open to talk about that. Talk about what have you learned about storage? It seems to be a pretty profitable business. Very profitable. So one of the things that I, um, I approached the township about was building an actual town center on, on a piece of property I have across the street. Um, they wasn't, they wasn't for it. They, they was against it. And I'm in a, like I said, I'm building 350 plus apartments. And one of the things that we realize that when people start to downsize and they start to move around, we have a lot of stuff. And so one of the things that I real, I wanted to do was provide them a, an opportunity to, you know, store them, their stuff close by. And so I started to do some due diligence about self-storage. And, and when you look at the return on investment with self-storage, I mean, it is absolutely phenomenal. So uh, I started to do some due diligence, um, hire an architect, um, start meeting with CubeSmart. So CubeSmart is going to be my, um, my uh, person who's going to manage my facility. Okay. And, they do a phenomenal job. So we, we look to have that completed sometime in 2023. And it will be another great asset and, and another great, you know, you know, piece of uh, real estate that I'll have. Well, that, 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 that's really brilliant to do. And, and your, the, the, the apartment complexes are beautiful. I mean, really the way you've designed it. So you really, I mean, Bordentown, um, what, what's going to be the total, total residents of, uh, of once it's all built out and so on, how many, how many, additional folks are going to be on your property, living on your properties? It'll be, I, I think, 360 units in total. Nice. Um, um, we got, like I said, we got more office space, retail space, um, building a daycare center um, on the property. So I think, you know, all in all, and, and, and I got to pinch myself when I look at this, you know, I, I would have to, um, invested close to about $140 million in wow. both development. So it's been, a, it's been phenomenal. Um, and, and just look forward to just, you know, positioning Bordentown and the residents of Bordentown, this community to be better and to live a ha happy, healthier lifestyle and just, just to be, you know, social butterflies and just to help others. And, you know, one of the, one of the, the, the realities is, and this is, and again, the history is important, is that you are the largest business and the largest taxpayer in Bordentown. And, and, it, and for me, it's, it's, it's particularly I'm proud because as an African-American, you're the largest business in a town and that doesn't happen that often. And so I applaud you that. And that's making some history. And, and that's, that's important to know. It really is important to know because it doesn't happen that often. It's a blessing, Dale. I mean, you know, when you, when you look at how this thing started and, this, and, and has the snowball started to go downhill and as things started to really come together and the amount of people, you know, I employ, I mean, you know, you're talking about, on my staff between my company and my health club, you got upwards over 100, 120, 130, you know, people. Then you start talking about the construction guys that, you know, we employ and, and all of those things. Um, like I said, you look at how many, how many households and how much, you know, things that we've helped, you know, spending, you know, over a hundred million dollars in construction costs. That, that's, 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 that's great. It makes me feel good. And um, just hopefully it continues to inspire people that, don't allow anyone to tell you what you can't do. You can do anything you put your heart and soul to and, and, and you're willing to accept the grind and, and push it forward. Hey man, Kevin, it, it's, I mean, really is phenomenal. Um, you're, you're employing so many people. This, as I said, this should be the number one priority of every politician is to create jobs, support entrepreneurship, and you are modeling it. And Bordentown's lucky that you picked them. 
could have been another town that's uh, that's reaping the benefits of uh, of of your work. So so Kevin, thanks for your time. It goes quickly. We're uh, we're at the at the end of time. Any final comments or anything you want to share? Any more about your website or any any contact information? No, I think if, if there's anything I can do for anyone, like I said, you know, please reach out to you know info at team eighty five fitness and wellness dot com, and I would do anything I can do to help anyone steer them in the right direction. Um, but I appreciate you, Dale. You continue to you know keep up the fight, continue to do what you do. Um, you're a blessing, and uh, you got a lot to offer people in this state and as well and and people around this country. You're, you're a great guy. Hey, man, thank you so uh, thank you so much. I want to thank all of you for, for watching. And again, this is going to be on video as well. And we'll have thousands of people watching it too. So have a great, uh, have a great day. Have a great weekend. And Kevin, thanks again. Be well. Thank you. Appreciate it, Dale.